डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नितेश गोयल फ्रॉम डी ए बी कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट बिफोर यू द ट्वेंटी मॉड्यूल टाइटल्ड नॉन प्रोबेबिलिटी सैम्पलिंग अंडर द पेपर टूरिज्म एंड हॉस्पिटैलिटी रिसर्च दिस मॉड्यूल विल कवर द फॉलोइंग टॉपिक्स फर्स्ट द इंट्रोडक्शन सेकेंड द स्कोप एंड पर्पज थर्ड द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सैम्पल डिजाइन फोर्थ द नॉन प्रोबेबिलिटी सैम्पलिंग फिफ्थ द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ नॉन प्रोबेबिलिटी सैम्पलिंग सिक्स द टाइप्स ऑफ नॉन प्रोबेबिलिटी सैम्पलिंग एंड फाइनली द समरी डियर फ्रेंड्स आफ्टर द कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल you will be able to know the different types of sampling understand what the non probability sampling is you will be able to have a deep insight into the various types of non probability sampling to understand the advantages and disadvantages of different types of non probability sampling before beginning I would like to give you a brief introduction of the topic. Sampling is defined as an approach of obtaining the units from the universe so that sound as well as accurate inferences can be made out of the population to be taken as sample. Sampling design is drawing or working plan that specifies the number of units to be taken under study. sample to be selected and the method of its estimation in all then reason behind the pursuance of undertaking the activity of doing the sampling design is to know about the characteristics of the population sampling design involves two parts first the sampling method it cites the procedures through which only few ingredients from the whole universe participate in the sample the most commonly used methods of sampling are simple random stratified and the cluster sampling second is the estimator the process of estimation for the calculation of statistics taken as a sample is called the estimator different kinds of estimators are used under different sampling methods for example the mean scores can be calculated by making the use of different methods of sampling in the same way the formula for the calculating varies from one method to the other choosing among one of the best sampling design is dependent on the purpose behind the research being carried on behind the survey and the availability of the budgetary resources for example a researcher who needs to carry out a research activity would select the most economical design that leads him to a desired level of precision and perfection if his budget is limited he may choose a design that is near to its objective without getting out of the budget now comes the scope and the purpose it is defined as a way of selecting a sample population among the whole universe this information helps in arriving at the conclusions as against the entire population the units of the population that have been selected to undertake a study is known as a sample sampling design encompasses all those activities starting from grouping the units on a particular scale sample size determination allocation of the resources required for sampling and finally the sample selection is the last step in the sampling process sampling design is affected by a number of factors 
in addition to achievement of the desired level of precision required and the need for producing the detailed information, the availability of right type of sampling units, the budgetary constraints, not only this, the availability of suitable variables for selecting the sample also have an effect on the sample designs. Sampling is of two types, probability and non-probability. The kind of sampling technique that makes the use of non-objective methods of selecting units is known as non-probability sampling. It is generally less time consuming, simple and an economical kind of sampling. Hence, it sometimes proves worthy to carry on the tasks like performing preliminary studies, etc. However, in order to make assumptions, one must assume its opposite in order to make the sample much more representative. The type of sampling that is based on certain principles and that gives shape to the whole statistical framework is known as the probability sampling. At first, this kind of sampling is done following the principle of randomization. Second, the part of the population that need to be part of the survey need to have a positive probability of being included in the sample. Third, the ability to obtain results among the entire population and quantify the error percentage makes probability sampling. One of the best choices for carrying out the most of the statistical computations. Decision is measured by making the use of the variances calculated by the estimator. Lack of accuracy due to biasness is often noticed due to the presence of various non-sampling factors such as measurement, inaccurate reporting, etc. Now, different types of sample design. While carrying on the research studies, it is difficult to study the entire population of one's interest. This is only why the researchers use samples that are collected from amongst the population in order to collect data and answer to the underlying questions. There are mainly two types of sampling methods, namely the non-probability methods and the probability. The different kinds of samples that can be created by making use of both the techniques are first of all on the basis of the representation. On the basis of representation, the samples can be selected by making the use of various probability sampling methods. And the probability sampling refers to, it refers to that kind of sampling in which the selection of units of the population is done on the random basis. The chart on your screen illustrates the sample designs as explained further. In this chart, both types of samplings are presented. As you can see in this chart, there are two types of sampling that is probability and non-probability sampling. Friends, we have already discussed the details of probability sampling in the earlier modules. Thus, this module will focus only on the non-probability sampling design. Now we come on to the non-probability sampling. Non-probability sampling is a type of technique where the samples are collected in such a manner that does not give all the individuals in the whole universe an equal chance of being selected. Since most of the researchers are restrained due to time, money and workforce and because of these, it is nearly impossible to select the random samples from amongst the entire population sample and therefore, it becomes necessary to use some other methods of sampling. Further, in comparison with the probability sampling, 
non probability sample does not involve random sampling in it the units in this kind of sampling are selected on the basis of their accessibility or the personal judgment of the researcher further a major drawback of the non probability sampling method is that an unknown variable of the entire population is not been sampled this may lead to samples not being represented accurately hence these results do not help sometimes in generalizing the research under study non probability sampling is a technique where the samples have been brought together in such a manner that all units in the population equal chances of being selected making a choice between one of these methods depends on the purpose of the study it refers to those sampling procedures in which there is no reasonable basis for knowing the probability of each item of the population being made a part of the sample study in this kind of probability sampling the items to be made a part of the study are selected deliberately by the researcher in other words under the non probability sampling the researcher trying to undertake an inquiry for carrying out research towards various unanswered questions knowingly chooses some particular samples out of the universe for constituting a sample that is representative of the whole population in such a design personal element such as biasness has a great chance of entering into the sample being chosen for carrying out the research activity and thereby affecting the validity and the reliability of the researcher's subject of the study the researcher may sometimes select a sample that yields results favorable to his own judgment the entire inquiry here leads to fallacious conclusions thus there is always a danger of bias present in this kind of sampling technique in this sampling cannot be accurately estimated and the element of biasness is always present due to the fact this type of sampling has higher chances of error that is the reason why it is rarely adopted while carrying out the inquiries on a larger scale however while undertaking smaller inquiries this type of design may always be more preferred because this kind of sampling is most economical in terms of time money and the other efforts involved now let's understand what is the importance of non probability sampling this type of sampling is used when professing about a particular characteristic between the entire populations it is used when the researcher is required to carry out prior studies it is brought into practice when random samples are not at all possible to be selected this kind of sampling is mostly used when the researcher's aim is to obtain the results which could lead to generalizations relating to the study under research it is mostly used when the researcher has financial as well as the budgetary constraints this technique can be used during the pursuance of an initial study for the first time let's now take the different types of non probability sampling one by one there are four different kinds of samples that can be created in this manner first the convenient sample in this method the researcher does not 
have any jurisdiction over the variables being used to represent the entire population. This kind of sampling is used when samples are commonly used in the early stages of research. There is no doubt that this method is quite useful, yet the researcher is not fully convinced to use the results obtained to generalize his or her research findings. Convenience sampling also explained as availability sampling is only one kind of non-sampling technique method that is totally dependent on statistics being collected from the representatives who are easy to contact and are reliable. It is the type of sampling where the primary data be used for probing into any inquiry further without any other statistical requirements. This sampling method involves reaching to the participants from anywhere and everywhere as is convenient. In this, no criteria is defined previously regarding the selection of the units which are to be made a part of the sample study. Therefore, all the subjects have full chances of being selected as a part of the sample. In the field of business, this method is used to gather original data regarding some important issue such as the launching of a new product. This kind of sampling technique can prove its effectiveness during the early stages of research activities. It is one of the most common methods of sampling among all the other sampling techniques. This kind of sampling technique is widely used as the samples which are required to be selected are easily accessible and can be chosen as per one's requirement. This technique is considered to be the most cost and time effective. Now, let us take on the advantages of convenient sampling. First, it is a simplified technique of sampling to carry on the research activity. Second, it is helpful in conducting pilot surveys and in building the hypothesis. Third, data collection is less time consuming in this method. Fourth, it is the cheapest method of sampling as compared to the other methods of sampling. After having the advantages, let us have some disadvantages of the convenient sampling. This method is highly affected by the presence of element of personal bias which is involved in the research activity carried on by the researcher. Secondly, sampling error is present in this type of sampling method, thereby making this method less reliable. The second type of non-probability sampling is the purposive or the judgmental sampling. It is one of those types of sampling whose selection amongst the whole universe is dependent on the knowledge about the population under consideration and the purpose behind the research study under consideration. It is one of those kinds in which the researcher is totally dependent on his own dilemma when making a choice among the participating units of the survey or the research activity in question. Ordinarily known as purposive sampling, the subjects which have been chosen to be a part of the sample study are selected keeping in mind the purpose behind the research activity to be carried on. In this method, the researcher decides as to what would be more apt according to him to carry on his research activity efficiently and effectively leading to sound results. 
it is one of the kinds of sampling methods used which is put to use when elements to be selected for research purposes are decided as per the research criteria as decided by the researcher. Purposive sampling is considered the most effective method of sampling where only limited number of people are present to help in the collection of relevant data required by the researcher to carry on his research activities due to the various complexities involved in the collection of primary data. In this, in certain situations, personal judgment may prove to be highly useful in providing answers to the research questions. Now we come to the advantages of the purposive sampling. Purposive sampling method is the most cost efficient method of sampling. It may be an appropriate method available if there is the availability of less number of primary data sources from where the data needs to be collected, which could further contribute towards survey findings. This method proves to be effective in finding out various situations to discover the meaning of certain unknown variables. Now we take on some of the disadvantages of the purposive sampling or say the judgmental sampling. This method has high chances of errors commitment by researcher while judging. This method is highly biased and less reliable. This method is incapable of providing generalized results of the research being carried on. This method is not very popular in business studies. Majority of the experienced people stress on choosing some other sampling methods to carry on the research activities, ensuring higher levels of reliability and low biasness. The next category of non-probability sampling is the snowball sampling. This technique of sampling is mostly used by researchers to identify the probable units required for carrying out the research process where the required samples are hard to be found. After doing the careful analysis of the subject under study, the researcher asks for some help from the subject expert to identify people with similar characteristics or the traits so as to carry on with the research work under process. They can be different types of snowball sampling. First, the linear snowball sampling. The initiation of the sample starts with only one subject. And each of the subjects then provides the researcher with further one referral. This pattern is continued until the group which was required to conduct the research activity is fully formed. The second type of snowball sampling is exponential or non-discriminative snowball sampling. The starting point of an entry that is made a part of the sample group provides with numerous referrals. New referral is scrutinized until sufficient amount of data is collected. Then is exponential discriminative snowball sampling. Subjects who are capable of providing multiple referrals are first made a part of the sample study. Only a single new subject is introduced among them. The choice of new subject been introduced depends upon the purpose underlying the study. Let us understand it with the help of an, an example of series of steps. It involves following steps. First, establishing contacts with some initial cases in the sampling frame is considered as one of the most difficult stage under the snowball sampling. In the second step or the second stage, then these initial cases are requested to identify 
some more cases. Thirdly, this process carries on till the sample is completed. One stops when only the pre-decided sample size has been collected and no further cases are left. Hence, when carrying on with further samples would add to the difficulty level making the sample size large. Now, advantages of snowball sampling. First, much of the hidden population can participate in the study. Secondly, the primary data can be collected in the most cost effective manner. Thirdly, studies based on this technique are less time consuming. Fourth, less planning is involved while collecting the primary data in this method. The disadvantages of snowball sampling. First, by collecting much more data from the peer group network can lead to inaccuracy and biasness of the data. Respondents may hesitate to give the names of their peer group to be included in the sample study. Third, due to lack of random sampling, it may be impossible to draw statistical inferences and locate sampling errors. Therefore, snowball sampling is an appropriate way of carrying out the research process when individuals required to be a part of the sample study are difficult to be found out. The next type of non-probability sampling is the quota sampling. It is a kind of technique used while collecting the samples where the sample that has been collected has the same magnitude of the individuals as the representation of the entire population is concerned with respect to the traits required to be possessed by the sample. It is worth being noted that the final sample must meet the researcher's quota criteria. Now, step by step quota sampling. This kind of sampling is used to separate out the population into various independent subcategories. Here, the research is required to find out the dimensions of the various subcategories of the population. Then this very same population is used while carrying on the sampling process under consideration. Finally, the researcher choose amongst the various subjects in between the subgroups duly considering the proportionalities arrived at noted in the previous step. The last step is to make sure that the sample represents the entire population. The advantages of quota sample. This technique is useful if a researcher wants to study a particular characteristic or the trait of a subgroup. It allows the researcher to establish the relationships between various subcategories. Now, the disadvantages of quota sample. With the use of this method, it may appear that the data selected totally represents the population, but it may not be true in all cases. Another type of non-probability sampling is the consecutive sampling. This kind of sampling is much similar to convenience sampling, which is again a type of non-probability sampling except for the fact that it encompasses nearly all accessible subjects to be a part of the sample. This sampling technique is considered best among all the other non-probability sample since it includes all the units that make the sample one of the best representative of the entire population. So friends, after having a detailed deliberation on the topic of non-probability sampling, let us now summarize the whole thing. Sample is basically defined as an approach of obtaining the units from the universe so that the sound as well as 
accurate inferences can be made out of the population to be taken as sample. Sampling design is a drawing or a working plan that specifies the number of units to be taken under study. The size of the sample, sample to be selected and the method of its estimation in all. There are broadly two types of sampling, one is probability and other is the non-probability sampling. Probability sampling is more objective and non-probability sampling is more of subjective nature. The present module has discussed the non-probability sampling in detail. There are further different types of non-probability sampling like convenience sampling, judgmental or purposive sampling, snowball sampling, quota sampling and consecutive sampling. All of the techniques have their own advantages and disadvantages and based on these only you can choose the best possible technique for the study at hand. Thank you.